Special thanks to Patreon supporter Derek Frost Rusberg for making this video possible. Hello ladies and gentlemen, Scare204 here bringing you another Minecraft World War II BAFTA build tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll be going ahead and building the Tashkent lead ship of the Tashkent class destroyer. The Tashkent class, officially known as Project 20, consisted of a single destroyer leader built in Italy for the Soviet Navy just before World War II. Three others were ordered from the shipyards in the Soviet Union, but they were canceled before they were laid down as they were too difficult to build with the existing technology in Soviet shipyards. Completed in 1940, Tashkent participated in the sieges of Odessa and Sevastopol in 1941 through 1942, during which she ferried reinforcements and supplies into those cities, evacuated wounded and refugees, and provided naval gunfire support for Soviet troops. The ship was badly damaged twice by Axis bombers before she was sunk in harbor in mid-1942. Her wreck refloated in 1944, but it was too badly damaged to be worth repairing and was scrapped after the war. Tashkent here is a pretty interesting ship uh, for what it is. It definitely looks pretty um, pretty, uh, pretty good for, for a uh, kind of early World War II destroyer. Um, this uh, here is a pretty nice design for it and was, as I mentioned, designed to kind of be more of a destroyer leader. So it's a little bit more of a beefier destroyer. Um, kind of, I guess, between a light cruiser and a destroyer, I guess, is where you can kind of place this um, in terms of, I guess, comparison of ship classes or types. Uh, but it's an interesting ship and a fun one to add to our Soviet Navy. We haven't had a destroyer yet, so it's always nice to have a uh, destroyer here added in um, into our World War II Soviet Navy, which has seen some expansion here in the past few months. So it's um, been kind of a nice uh, ship to add into our line of uh, World War II Soviet ships. Before we go ahead and jump into the build, though, I do want to go ahead and give a special thanks to Patreon support Derek Foss Westbrook for making this tutorial possible. If you guys are interested in supporting the channel more you already do, feel free to check my Patreon page. Link is always in my video description. It's where you can go and pledge a small amount to the channel every month and doing so earn a few requests to your choosing. It really helps support the work I do on my channel. It's really greatly appreciated, so definitely feel free to check that out. Again, link for all that is always in my video descriptions. With that though, let's go ahead and dive in here and take a look at the Tashkent class destroyer. So going ahead and dive in, diving into it, we have um, our main gun. So it has two kind of dual uh, barrel gun batteries, um, obviously two here in the front and all that. And then we have our conning tower, you know, typical destroyer, pretty sleek, um, low profile, um, you know, conning tower. You get the uh, forward mast, some lifeboats here on the sides. We got our funnels as well as our torpedo launchers here. We have some anti-aircraft gun positions located around the second funnel, as well as some more lifeboats, our uh, aft torpedo launchers, which are pretty interestingly placed. They actually have three of these torpedo launchers. I think they are uh, triple um, tubed launchers, if I remember correctly as well, so pretty interesting. Uh, not too often you see three launchers on a destroyer. We then have a uh, some cranes here. Uh, and then the rear turret and the rear mass, and that's really the ship. It's pretty simple and straightforward, uh, but a really cool ship nonetheless. And our, again, our first ever kind of Soviet destroyer, so kind of nice to add into some of these um, really nice Soviet cruisers and uh, one battleship that we've had uh, in our BAFTA build fleet. So with that, though, let's go ahead and move into the tutorial by beginning with our first layer, layer number one. All right, guys, moving into our first layer here, we will be going ahead and starting off with layer number one. Now, uh, before we go ahead and jump into this, I just want to go ahead and mention that if you're building this in the water, you do need to make sure you build layer 1 here, a certain height in the water. You can see here that we have the red concrete here representing layer 1, and we can see the blue concrete representing where that water level will sit. So you basically want layer 1 here exactly level with that um, water level to go ahead and make sure everything sits smoothly. With that all done though, we're going to go ahead and place down a uh, brick wall going forward from that red concrete block, and then a red stained glass pane after that. We're going to go then take our red concrete, we're going to go back from this block, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21 red concrete blocks back for a total of 22. We're going to go then take our brick slabs, and we're going to go and place down a row of 1, 2, 3, and 4 brick top slabs, as well as a red concrete block here on the end, and then an acacia wood trap door. After that's done, we're going to take our red stingless paints, we're going to place down 1, 2, on these last two blocks here and one two over here we'll then take our brick walls we're going to go one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen like that forward and then one two red stained glass panes like that over here we're going to do the same thing 
and the exact same thing that we did over on the other side. So it's going to look like this so far for layer number one. At the end here, we're going to go ahead and grab ourselves some lightning rods. We're going to place down two lightning rods that go back from those glass panes. We then want to go ahead and grab an acacia wood fence key. We're going to place down a fence key here, open that toward the slab on both sides, and then we're going to place down a skeleton skull coming off those uh, fence gates. If you are on a version um, that does not allow you, or really I think just in general, if you place this in the water, you're not able to place down zombie heads in the water. An alternative to this could be either using a birch wood slab or um, you know something kind of smaller. Unfortunately, the heads here are kind of the best representation of the size of the props. Um, but you can kind of mess with it and come up with something a little bit better. Obviously, if you're building this out of water, not much concern there. Anyways, though, that is it for this layer. Layer 1, pretty simple stuff. Here's an overview of what it should look like from the top-down view. And with that, we'll be going ahead and moving into our next layer, which will be layer number 2. Moving into our next layer, we have layer number 2. For layer 2 to start with, we're going to place down the inside wall on top of this glass pane, as well as 1, 2, 3 stone blocks back. We're going to go ahead and then grab ourselves some um, deep slate. Um, or these these polished deep slate tiles replace down one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty one twenty two twenty three twenty four and twenty five of those blocks back down the center here and then a stone block on the very end we're gonna go then go to the sides we're gonna place down one two three like racing with paints and then one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty two one twenty two and twenty three and to say walls forward two like racing with paints a item frame and then a crossbow and the item frame rotated face downwards like so over here we're gonna do the same thing item frame crossbow rotate the face downwards then we have our like race name as pains and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, and 23. And it's like walls and then 1, 2, 3, like race name as pains back. That right there is going to basically wrap up what we have here for uh, layer number 2. And again, here's an aerial overview of what it should look like from the top down view. And with that, we'll be going ahead and move on to our next layer, which will be layer number three. Moving on to our next layer, we have layer three. For layer three to start with, we're going to place down a stone brick stair here on the front, and then we're going to place down one, two, three deep slate tiles, um, slabs back from it. We're going to place down skeleton skulls on the sides of these two slabs here, and then a skeleton skull on top of the glass pane, like that, on both sides of that third slab. We then want to go ahead and place down a birchwood fence gate on top of this block here, open that toward the back, fall that off a stone brick slab, and then an andesite wall. On the sides here of those blocks, we're going to place down three skeleton skulls, just like that. After that's done, we're going to go ahead and take our stone blocks, we're going to build back one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight stone blocks back like so. And on the sides here, we're going to go ahead and place down an additional one, two, three skeleton skulls, one, two, three. After those three are placed, we're going to go ahead and then place down an end rod to both sides. And we're going to go ahead and then place down a row of two, of course, stop slabs going back from the end rods. And then another end rod like this on both sides. This section here, we want to go ahead and grab some waxed exposed co copper. We're going to place this right here. Then a end rod to both sides, a stone block in the middle, another waxed uh, copper block here, and then another stone block. We're going to go ahead and again place down our two quartz stop slabs on both sides and end rods on top of those walls like that. After we have that done, we're going to continue on for stone blocks. One, two, three, four stone blocks. And we're going to go ahead and then place down a stone stair on the very end here. After that, we're going to go then place down an end rod here on top of this wall here to both sides. And we're going to go then take our polished black stone walls or buttons. And we're going to go two along the side there. After that, we're going to place down a stone brick stair here. And we're going to go ahead and then place down a birchwood fence gate coming off the front of the stair, opened up toward it like that. Then, uh, so the last things here on the back is going to be a flower pot in the center here, and then a redstone repeater with a not to spread apart like that on the very end. And that right there is going to complete what we have there for uh, layer number three for the build. Again, taking a look at it from up above, this which should look like from the top down view. With that all done, we'll be going ahead and moving on up to our next layer, which will be layer number four. Moving on to our next layer, we have layer four. For layer four to start with, we're going to place down an iron bar on top of this stair here. We're going to go ahead and then place down a stone brick stair on top of this block here and then going ahead and going forward from it we want to go ahead and place down a birchwood fence gate like that and open it up toward the stair we're going to go then place down a lake racing was pain right behind that stair as well as one and two stone full blocks we're going to place down a skeleton skull on both sides of that first stone block 
And we then want to place down a iron trap door on top of these end rods here, as well as a birchwood sign on the side of the iron trap doors facing out to the sides. We then want to go ahead and place down a stone stair here, which will be followed with a skeleton skull, which is going to come off the side of the iron trap doors. Make sure it's not on the quartz slabs, but rather it is uh, coming off the iron trap doors. We're going to go ahead and place down a chain that's going to come back from those two skulls. And we then want to place down a stone block here in the very center. After that, we're going to go ahead and place down a gray bed, which is going to sit right here. And then after that gray bed, we want to go ahead and place down a birchwood fence gate right here in the middle. So a fence gate here, which we're going to open up toward the rear of the ship. We're going to place down a stone block in the center, a narrow birchwood fence gate here, open that toward the front, as well as a birchwood sign on both sides of the stone block. After we have that done, we want to go ahead and take iron trap doors. We're going to place them coming off the sides here of the fence gates, like so. And we're going to go ahead and then continue on our build by continuing to work our way back with a gray bed here. We then want to go ahead and place down a andesite wall right here, and then another gray bed in this spot. We're going to go ahead and then place down skeleton skulls coming off the end rods. And we're going to then go ahead and place down an end rod going back from the skeleton skulls, as well as one more skeleton skull like that coming off the end rods like so. We then want to go ahead and place down a cobweb that's going to go right here. We'll grab ourselves an item frame and a snowball. We're going to place down an item frame here and a snowball like that going toward the back. And after we have that all done, uh, we're going to go ahead and real quickly for my Java players, uh, we can go ahead and do a little bit of extra detailing here and we're going to start off with going ahead and grabbing ourselves the debug stick. Now to get the debug stick, you'll type in the command um, slash give space at p minecraft colon debug underscore stick. So it'll be this command right here and press enter will give you this glowing stick. What we can do here is um, some pretty cool techniques is we can go ahead and kind of build a block that goes up from this end rod and then one out to the side. We'll then delete that block and we'll do the same thing over here. Now on the block space above the end rod there, we're going to go ahead and place down a lever on the side of this block. We're going to go ahead and left click it with our debug stick to selected uh, face and it should be, should say wall in parentheses. We're going to right click that, set that to floor. We're going to go ahead and then do our, the same thing here uh, with our um, levers, except we're going to go ahead and do some time do the facing and we're going to go ahead and rotate these until they connect up to our chains. So just like that. And we're just going to go ahead and do the same thing to this end rod right back here. So again, we're just going to go ahead and kind of build this out to the side and we're going to do the same thing. Just like so. Set that to floor and go ahead and rotate these around. So they look just like that there for those levers. With those levers all complete, um, one thing also we can do is we can just go ahead and modify the properties of these glass panes and the wall up here. So we have this glass pane that's connecting up to the stair, we can actually alter that. Now I would recommend if you're not on Java, such as and you're on Bedrock or Pocket Edition, actually place down a skeleton skull here, because you do want to have a little bit of space between this turret and the conning tower here. Um, for us, we have this glass pane, but we can actually go ahead and change it with our debug stick to actually go ahead and avoid this connection. To do this, we can left click this, and it may vary depending on what direction you have the ship. We can actually go ahead and find the direction that the glass pane, so if we count this as a center, it's going toward this way. You press F3, you can see you have your kind of, um, I guess, overall world stats here. And you can see in that second paragraph, that fourth line says facing south towards uh, whatever. Uh, but yeah, we're facing south and we can use that for reference when we go ahead and make our selections. Then for me, I'm just going to extend the glass pane also out to these two sides here. But as you can see, it does not connect up to that stair and it kind of helps fit that overall um, shaping and look there for the front. We can also do the same thing here for the wall. So we can go ahead and uh, remove this from the uh, forward section there and we can do a design that looks just like that there for that wall. So pretty simple stuff, just kind of helps improve the overall kind of shaping and connections and stuff like that. But that right there is going to include everything we have for layer four. And with that, we'll probably just go ahead and move into our last final layers. All right guys, so moving into our final layers, we have layers five through nine. For this layer to start with, we're gonna go, go to the stone block here. We're gonna place down a piston on top of it or any kind of full block or block that you can attach tripwire hooks to it. Because on both sides of this piston, we will be going ahead and attaching a tripwire hook like that to both sides. After that is done, we're going to go ahead and then place down a anisite wall going back from it, as well as a uh, birchwood fence gate that's going to come off of this um, wall, and we're going to open the fence gate toward the wall itself. We'll then take our uh, 
pit or on top of this um, trap door here or this wall we're gonna place down an iron trap door and we're gonna go then take birchwood signs and on the three sides or the three facings to the sides and then also the one facing forward we're gonna place down some birchwood signs then we want to go ahead and take our debug stick and for Java players we're going to go ahead and left click the piston until we have selected extended false. We'll right click that and it should set to true and it'll get rid of that wood portion and we'll just have that, that portion underneath there. So nice technique there. Then we have our end rod that's going to go up from this fence post here and then up from that end rod we're going to place down a birchwood fence post and then another end rod on both sides of this end rod we will have an additional end rod coming off the sides and then we're going to place down a iron bar on the very top here. Again, if you're a Java player, we can go ahead and do a connection up here on the top, which is going to be coming off this uh, fence post, or this fence, yeah, the fence post right there. We're going to have a kind of a space like this and a trip bar hook. We're going to left click this till we get selected facing. We'll right click this, rotate it around so it looks like it comes off that fence post uh, for again some detail there on the, on the uh, main mast there. After that's done, we're going to go ahead and place down a stone block here. And then behind, or on top of that stone block, rather, we're going to place down a polished black stone slab. We then want to place down a black or a stone block on top of this stone block here, as well as a black carpet on top of that block. We're going to go ahead and then take our levers and we're going to place down levers here on these trap doors. If you're on Java, we're also going to place down levers right here. And then using our debug stick here, we're going to go ahead and set these to floor. And we want to make sure that we rotate these so that they are facing toward the uh, front and back, so facing away from the funnel. And that'll start to form our anti-aircraft gun positions. Everywhere, again, on this can be a Java feature only here, but anywhere we have the um, levers, we can go ahead and place down some uh, item frames to go ahead and kind of create more kind of defensive, I guess, type positions around those anti-aircraft guns. Just kind of gives a little bit more detail, I think. Um, so that's going to finish that up there. Then for the rear mast, pretty simple. We're going to place down two end rods on top of each other, one end rod out to both sides like this, and then one end rod going toward the rear. We're going to go ahead and then just place down an iron bar on the top of this end rod right there, and that's going to basically finish that off like that. Now, at this point, we then want to go ahead and grab ourselves some barriers and some stone buttons. We're going to take barriers. We're going to go off this end rod one, two, three, four, five barriers. We're going to go ahead and then go up and back one. So you have a narrow barrier block here. We're going to go ahead and do six. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six. We're going to go ahead and then take our stone buttons and we're going to go ahead and run them along the sides here of these barrier blocks and then we're going to go ahead and run them down the top there of those barrier blocks like that going back so it's going to look something just like that after that is all done right there that's going to pretty much wrap up what we have here for the um russian taskent part of the taskent class of destroyers and hopefully you guys do enjoy the build if you do want to be using this design i do ask that you guys give me proper credit for it this being from a link to my channel to um or this uh video if this is a pretty social media sites as long as you guys give me proper credit for it, you're free to for a project you guys are working on overall enjoy the build have fun fit and all that fun stuff again a big special thanks to patreon supporter derek foss westbrook for making this tutorial possible and as always feel free to check my patreon page uh link is always in the video description for it with that though, thank you guys again so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This is Miguel204, and I'll see you guys next time.